Good morning, this is Dr. Wheeler. Today we're going to talk a foreign language. Today we're going to talk about PIRADS. I want everyone here to know what PIRADS stands for, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about it. So PIRADS is P-I-R-A-D-S. A little bit like a foreign language to everyone listening in. Uh, unless you're a radiologist, uh, you will likely not know what those uh, letters stand for. So it actually stands for Prostate Imaging Reporting and Data System. So that's a long, long name, but that name basically has an equivalency to, the, uh, to a prostate biopsy. Everyone's familiar, or most people are familiar with a Gleason grade. So Gleason grade is one to five. Gleason score is two numbers, one to five with the first number being the most dominant cancer found with a biopsy. So PIRADS, PIRADS was created in an effort to find the radiologic equivalent to a tissue sample. After all, if we're looking at an image, and we're looking at that image from a scanner, such as a 3T MRI scanner but that has a multi-parametric uh, um, sequence uh, to it or a, a software package that allows us to do the multi-parametric uh, facets of that uh, particular test, we, have, we can relate that back to a Gleason score. Remember, a Gleason score is actually our eyes looking at a piece of tissue under a microscope. So from my perspective, I don't see any difference in looking at an image, chest x-ray as an example, an image of the brain as an example, being able to tell what that says, it, that is no different than basically having a piece of tissue that would validate that. We don't really need validation if we've done this hundreds of times. In fact, we have 280 cases that are blinded to each other where we've had an MRI done and a biopsy was done. They were blinded to each other. That means that the people that did the MRI did not know what the biopsy showed and the people that did the biopsy, uh, excuse me, the people that did the biopsy did not know what the MRI showed. So neither camp knew what the other was. So that's important and that makes it a double-blinded study and makes it very valid. Using that study, we have a 98 to 99 percent positive predictive value, meaning that the MRI, the multi-parametric MRI, has the ability to predict cancer and is shown to be worthy of a very high predictive value for especially for PIRADS of 4 and 5. So let's get into the PIRADS uh, and talk a little bit more about the prostate imaging uh, 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 language. Specifically, this language came about because of the European Society of Urogenital uh, Radiology. And this is from 2012. Since this article came out, and this was a seminal article back in the day, but since this article came out, the American College of Radiology uh, has made improvements upon this, uh, minor changes in it, that allow us to actually be even better at basically talking about a piece of tissue and an image in the same sentence. So that's very important. So when we look at PIRADS. PIRADS is actually graded based on three sequences. Those three sequences are T2 weighted images, which are hypo-intense lesions. If we were to look at this particular uh, scan that we have behind us, this is a representative 3T uh, scan. This is a hypo-intense lesion, which is noted to be ROI, or region of interest, here. Uh, this is the prostate here. The prostate sits here. This is the left side, this is the right side. The pubic bone sits here with the diastasis of the pubic bone being there. This was done back in the day when we used an endorectal coil to uh, basically allow us to see uh, more closely uh, interpreting uh, the tissue uh, that was right next to the coil uh, as we looked at the prostate specifically. This scan was done back in 2007. We no longer use the coil because our reading abilities and our tools have improved significantly uh, since that time 
such that we do not need that coil any longer. So as we talk about this, so this would represent a T2-weighted image here. This has two cancers in it, this image. One right here that is circled. There's another up here that is associated with what we call a charcoal sign right here. Right here, this is anterior. This is posterior here. This is the left side mid-prostate. The urethra would be right here, and the right side would be here. So as you look at that, that gives you a little bit of an understanding. So one of the, one of the principal uh, uh, sequences in the PIRADS is T2-weighted imaging. So again, we're looking for something that's hypo-intense. We also have dynamic contrast enhancement, or DCE. DCE basically looks at the ability of the tissue to pick up the perfusant. We're going to inject something in the vein, typically gadolinium, or we could use some other marker, but presently we primarily use gadolinium. Uh, there are various uh, brands of that uh, uh, product uh, that various companies carry. But by doing that, injecting that, we're able to see how that tissue picks up this particular perfusant. And so we grade that one to five, one to five. We would also grade this image on the T2-weighted imaging, one to five. And then we would add DWI, or diffusion-weighted imaging. So when we get to diffusion, we're also looking for a decreased uh, signal such as this on an ADC map or an apparent diffusion coefficient map. And then we're also looking for the SP1000 uh, uh, or SP1400 uh, value that should be bright in concert with an ADC uh, finding that is uh, uh, dark. So as we look at that, Others have come out and talked about this and given the equivalency to a biopsy. So we as doctors and certainly you as patients as you watch this uh, video clip, you're wondering why don't we all use PIRADS? Why can't we eliminate a biopsy? Well, first of all, biopsy is the gold standard. And while uh, I may not agree that it's a gold standard because its accuracy can be called into question, I can tell you that based on data from the NIH from 2011, which is from the uh, uh, Turk Bay, Barris Turk Bay is the key author on that study of 46 men that had radical prostatectomies. The, the, uh, prior to uh, the radical prostatectomies, the patients were biopsied. They recorded the location of those biopsies. They, once, once they took out the prostates, they actually built a little stanchion or a, uh, uh, a little uh, plaster Paris uh, mold that allowed them to place that into the MRI magnet in the position that it would be as if a human being still carried that prostate. And they evaluated that uh, uh, prostate there. And they were able to find all but one or two of the cancers that were noted and found cancers that were not noted from the biopsy. So you can see clearly that if you've got prostate cancer, and it's a significant disease, that the multi-parametric MRI scan done with a 3T magnet is essential to your diagnostic skill set. So men that have a rising PSA, where a biopsy is suggested by your caregiver, usually a urologist or a family doctor, you can now say, I would prefer to have an MP MRI done with a three Tesla magnet to find out what I have. And then at that point, you may decide yes or no that you have sufficient information to move along and do that biopsy. Or you may decide that based on the fact that some of the insurance carriers, specifically United Healthcare, has stated as of January 2015, that a scan using the 3T MPMRI uh, technology is equivalent to a biopsy. That information is unbelievable because there's a group of you out there that want no part of a biopsy because of the issues associated with it. The issues associated with biopsy are specifically um, bleeding from all orifices below the waist for upwards of two months. You can have fever, chills, or rigors, which is associated with sepsis. 
sepsis is sickness that is associated with bacteria getting into the bloodstream from that biopsy process. <clears throat> beyond that, beyond that, you could have septic shock where your organs fail and based on that failure you could actually die from a biopsy. That happened in 2010 at Johns Hopkins. It happened in 2013 in Texas. I believe personally that it's underreported. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want men to be scared that they can die from this biopsy procedure, but there's also erectile dysfunction, incontinence issues, certainly pain associated with the biopsy. So the biopsy is not an innocuous, is not an innocuous process. I believe in the Hippocratic Oath, and the Hippocratic Oath says that we as doctors must first do no harm. The MP MRI done with a 3T scan basically comes closest to doing what Hippocrates would have recommended for us to do. Given all of that, as we continue to talk about uh, the, the sequences, again, T2 weighted imaging, dynamic contrast enhancement, and diffusion weighted imaging, those, those are all evaluated one to five, one to five. So as they're evaluated, the total number then that you could receive from that PIRADS would be 15. We have three different sequences, so whatever the number, we would divide it by three. So you can see by this particular, this particular uh, um, presentation here, this happens to be Hambrock's work here. And basically what this says is that if you have a PIRADS of three, that you could have a Gleason score, you could have a Gleason score of uh, either six or seven, but the seven would be a three plus four seven, meaning that the first number of seven, a three, is the most dominant cancer found as a piece of tissue. The four, which is a higher grade of cancer, that's the second most common when you common uh, type of tissue found when you have a three plus four seven. A pyrads of four, you can see here, you can read this across, a pyrads of four would be a seven, four plus three seven, with again a Gleason four being the first number and a three being the secondary number, whereby the four is the most dominant grade found. Subsequently, a Gleason score of eight could be noted uh, with a uh, pyrads of four. When we get to pyrads of five, you can that would rep be representative of a Gleason score of eight, four plus four, nine. Uh, four plus five, nine would be more favorable than five plus four, nine. And then of course ten, which would be five plus five, ten. So we have learned a little bit here today, and uh, I can tell you that. Uh, this particular article that I spoke to, which again represents uh, a very nice uh, understanding of what PIRADS is all about, is really associated uh, based on the European Society of Urogenital uh, Radiology. And this article is actually authored by uh, people like Yelly Behrens, uh, Peter Choike uh, from the NIH, uh, Sadna Verma, uh, from the University of Cincinnati, and uh, Jurgen Futterer uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, Jelly Behrens is also from the ne Netherlands as well. So this is a very, very nicely done uh, presentation. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the PIRADS is essential to understanding what biopsies stand for and what they mean. You have a decision to make. You can always get an MRI and a biopsy. You could get a biopsy without an MRI. Now, I don't recommend that you have a biopsy done finding a cancer and then being told that you do not need an MRI. I'm going to tell you right now that if you have a Gleason score of six, which is really a puppy dog of a cancer that we as doctors don't want people to be treated for. Now, there are variations in sixes that would tell us that that should be treated. Things like an elevating PSA, progressively rising PSA, possibly the location of the six. But my point is that if you decide that you want to follow or monitor your cancer and you do not want to be treated, in my opinion, you must have a low PSA and a stable PSA. 
meaning that it's not progressively rising. In addition to that, you must have a 3 Tesla multiparametric MRI scan. That scan will tell you whether or not there's a more sinister cancer lurking that the biopsy did not find, such as this charcoal sign, which represents a pyrads of five. This particular cancer here, the hypo-intense uh, cancer that's found right here, region of interest, was a three plus four seven. So you can see that there's a vast difference between what is found with the biopsy and what the visuals from an MP MRI using a 3T scanner will tell us. So therefore, be smart, get a scan, always think scan. If you decide you've got to have a biopsy to prove it, beyond that, you'll join my 280 patients that I've already gathered that are yet to be reported on, and I welcome you to give me a call, and I'll add your data uh, to my data. So uh, with that note, I'll bid you adieu for today. Uh, this is the end of the lecture on Pyrads. So get to know Pyrads. It's a language you want to know. It's a language I know. It's a language that radiologists know. And we encourage all urologists to understand that language as well. So with that thought, thank you.